troublesome trucks. James did not see Sir Topham Hatt for several days. They left James alone in the shed and did not even allow him to go out and push coaches and freight cars in the yard. Oh, dear, he thought sadly. I'll never be allowed out any more. I shall have to stay in this shed for always, and no one will ever see my red coat again. Oh, dear, oh, dear, James began to cry. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came along. I see you're sorry, James, he said. I hope now that you will be a better engine. You have given me a lot of trouble. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. I'm very sorry, sir, said James. I will try hard to behave. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hat kindly. I want you to pull some freight cars for me. Run along and find them. So James puffed happily away. Here are your freight cars, James, said a little tank engine. Have you got some bootlaces ready? And he ran off laughing rudely. Oh, 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 said the freight cars as James backed up to them. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the guard was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the freight cars, but James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching freight car sternly out of the yard. The freight cars tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot. Each time they would have to stop and put the trouble right, and each time James would start again, determined not to let the freight cars beat him. Give up, give up. You can't pull us. You can't, you can't, called the freight cars. I can and I will, I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last, they saw Gordon's Hill ahead. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We will go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster, and they suit, and they were soon halfway up the hill. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, he panted, but it was hard work. Will the top never come, he thought, when with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it, I've done it, he puffed triumphantly. Hurrah, he thought, it's easy now, but his driver shut off steam. They've done it again, he said, we've left our tail behind. The last ten freight cars were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the guard was very, was brave. Very carefully and cleverly, he made them stop. Then he got out and walked down the line with his red flag. That's why it was easy, said James, as he was backed into other, the other freight cars as he backed the other freight cars carefully down. What silly things freight cars are. There might have been an accident. Meanwhile, the guard had stopped Edward, who was pulling three coaches. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. No, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. So James got ready. Then with a peep peep, he was off. I can do it. I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. Peep, 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 peep. You're doing well, whistled Edward as James slowly struggled up the hill with clouds of smoke and steam pouring from his funnel. I've done it, I've done it, he panted and disappeared over the top. They reached their station safely. James was resting in the yard when Edward puffed by with a cheerful peep, peep. Then walking towards him across the rails, James saw Sir Topham Hatt. Oh dear, what will he say? He asked himself sadly, but Sir Topham Hatt was smiling. I was in Edward's train and saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome freight cars on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. James and the Express. Sometimes Gordon and Henry slept in James's shed, and they would talk of nothing but bootlaces. 
Soon, sorry, James would talk about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen and went on talking and laughing. You talk too much, little James, Gordon would say. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct, said Gordon proudly. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signalman works the switches to make engines run on the right lines, but Gordon was so proud that he had forgotten. Wake up, James, he said the next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Ah, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late now. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were now all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, We're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I would love to pull the express and go flying along the line. He left them in the station and went back to the yard just as Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, backed up to the train. Sir Topham Hatt was on the train with other important people, and as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now. Look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him out of the station. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James. See you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear around a curve and then went back to work. He pushed some freight cars into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. He brought the coaches to the platform and was just being uncoupled when he heard a mournful, quiet, shush, 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 and there was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? No, it was lost for me, he answered crossly. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all around and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James brightly. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the ticket office. We want our money back, they shouted. Everyone was making noise. But Sir Topham Hatt climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new, a new train at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir. I'll try. So James was coupled on and everyone got in again. Do your best, James, said Sir Topham Hatt kindly. Just then the whistle blew and he had to run to get it. Get in. Come along, come along, Puff James. You're pulling us well. You're pulling us well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 Puff James. Stations and bridges flashed by. The passengers leaned out of the windows and cheered, and they soon reached the terminus. Everyone said thank you to James. Well done, said Sir Topham Hatt. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James happily. The next day when James came by, Gordon was pushing freight cars in the yard. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these freight cars manners. You did well with the, those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his freight cars a bump, making them cry. Oh, oh, oh. James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they are both quite agreed on the subject of freight cars.